Welcome to part 36. As a very quick follow-up to the previous video, I want to add two additional pieces of functionality to edit.php. Um, basically, I want to anticipate any sort of issues that might come up as a user is using our application. And the first thing is a security-based issue. Um, at the moment, there's no way to make sure that the user is properly logged in if they view the edit.php page. So how I'm going to make that function properly. Um, if you remember from a couple videos ago, we created a settings.php file as a demonstration to make sure that our authorization system was working properly and um, users wouldn't be able to access pages that they shouldn't be able to access to without proper authorization. So I'm going to copy this line from our settings.php file and paste it in here at the top of our edit.php file right below the include. So what will happen now if the user isn't logged in, um, and actually let me go ahead and test this. Let me log out, and let's try to access that edit.php page directly. So it's within app, cms, edit.php, and you notice we do get an unauthorized message, so that is working properly. So let me go back and log back in and talk about the second change that I wanted to make. Okay, so the second thing is what happens if rather than clicking on an editable area as normal and having it pop up in a color box, what happens if the user decides to right click on it and open it in a new tab or a new window? Well, if they do that, they get a page that looks sort of like this. And uh, to be honest, there isn't that much we can do about this. If you look at the source code, you'll notice that it doesn't include the usual HTML and head and body tags that are necessary for a fully functioning website. And we aren't including JavaScript, um, or excuse me, we aren't including jQuery. So this Ajax functionality isn't going to work. What happens though, if I go back and um, let me refresh this page and try to submit the form, we get error messages because the form tries to submit but it has issues. It run, runs into um, unidentified index of ID and type. Because if we check edit.php, it's trying to access variables that are only set using Ajax. So I want to make sure there's a way to catch this and to automatically display an error to the user indicating what's going on. So here, um, basically what happens, to go back here for one second, the form submits and this field is set so there is a post field variable that's set properly but index or excuse me ID and type are not set so that's what I'm going to check for so if is set and I'm going to check if the field variable is set if that is set and either the post ID or the post type are not set so if is set of post ID equals false or the is set of post type is false then we want to handle things a little bit differently. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to call our template error function um, like we set up earlier. I'm going to paste that into place. And then down below, rather than a regular if statement, I'm going to do an else if, like so. As the last change to this file, let's update the error function so we can actually pass along a message to display rather than having a set message that uh, always displays. So let's open up um, within core models m underscore template. Let's take a look at our error function. Um, the first argument is type. And I actually want to modify this so it defaults to a blank string. So we don't have to specify a type variable if we don't want to. Um, if we don't specify a type, it'll default to the automatic error message. However, I also want to add a second variable. Um, I'm going to call it uh, message. 
and this is also going to default to a blank string and down here at the bottom I'm going to say if message does not equal a blank string I want to use this uh, set data and I'm going to create a variable that will be accessible within our views I'm going to call it message and I'm going to pass along message to it. Now we're going to use the set data function here otherwise so else we're also going to do another set data function except rather than using the message variable we're going to pass in a string and um, if we open up v underscore error dot php I'm going to copy this content I'll delete it for the moment and we'll come back here in one second. And I'm going to copy or I'm going to paste that content here. So basically what this does is it sets a default message in case message is not predefined. So to go back here rather than displaying a fixed message I'm going to use a PHP function. So we're going to echo out this get data and we're going to echo out that message variable that we just created, like so. So let me save this file. I'll save m underscore template as well. And let's go back to our edit.php file. And um, the last change we need to do is we need to modify our error message here. So now it now accepts two arguments. It accepts the error type and also the error message itself. So in this case we can leave the error type alone so I'm just going to include a blank string there and then a comma and then the actual message and uh, this message is up to you um, maybe you can think of something better than I can but I'm simply going to say um, please do not open up edit windows within a new window or a tab and the only other thing that I noticed very quickly was that this is FT and it should be FP. And the same thing with this one down here. So um, just in case you run into that error, make sure to double check that. So let's go ahead and preview this. Um, let me open this up in a new tab. Hit submit. You'll notice that we do get the proper error window, um, the error page with the correct error message.